Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. Today I am doing a sponsored video, uh, specifically a video sponsored by, uh, uh, let's grab it, Escape from Site 19. Uh, this is the box that the product comes in, although I don't guess you can call it a box, the cylinder that the <laughs> product comes in. I'm trying not to touch my microphone because I'm afraid it'll break. Um, before I get into the game itself, which it is a board game, and by the way, everything here uh, both fits in the bot in this tube and also refits in the tube later and when you're trying to pack everything back up. But I wanted to go over an extra they sent me that is another product that they offer on their website, and there'll be links to everything in the description below with a coupon code of Dr. Sumerian to get you 20% off your entire purchase. Use it and it will send money my way. Just let me be clear about that. But there are um, these candles that come as part of the, uh, they have a secondary like pack thing. And here is the Wondertainment candle, which I think is great. Um, church of the Broken God, not Church of the Broken God. <laughs> it's right there. Fifth is church. I got the churches confused. Didn't really get them confused, but you know what I mean. Global Occult Coalition. Church of the Broken God, for real, this time. And let's see, we've got Chaos Insurgency and Prometheus Labs. Ah. And uh, the game itself, and see, uh, playing with a candle, I've, I've looked through the rules a little bit. I haven't been able to play with anybody because, well, quarantine. But you need a candle to play with. So here it is. This is the one that comes with the game itself and then those are a bunch of extra scented candles that are fun to play with as well let's put this because it's quite large i have it setting up there for now but i'll put it right over here can you see it from there yes um so i went through the game uh information here and we can go to the website itself and read off just a little bit of what they say here Site-19 has experienced a catastrophic containment breach. Previously secured anomalies are now roaming free. You're one of a handful of human survivors. Can you escape before it's too late? Escape from Site-19 takes place in the world of the SCP Foundation, a secret organization dedicated to containing paranormal entities that would otherwise threaten human life and our perceptions of reality. Unlike other board games, Escape from Site-19 requires you to work together as a team to complete physical and mental challenges of varying difficulty. Conquer your fears, push your boundaries, dig deep, and pull the team's resources to beat the game. It is four between three and five players. Uh, they believe it could take anywhere between uh, three hours or more. And it is definitively for... Uh, 18 plus. I, I want to be clear about that. Uh, some of the tasks in here are quite adult. Um, and that's another thing. I've gone through the tasks. It has certainly got enough to play with that I think, you know, are not particularly objectionable. But this is supposed to be an honest review. I got actually, let me be clear about this. I got paid to do a review and I'm also got the coupon code to get more affiliate money. But well, it's not really technically affiliate, but you use the coupon code and I get a percentage of the sale. That's the important part. Dr. Sumerian. I'm getting paid for this, but I would like to offer that should you decide to get the game, please look through all of the content first. Find anything you think might be objectionable and take it out because there's huge decks you can play with. And it does say push your boundaries or whatever, but boundaries exist for a reason as well. Like there, you can push your boundaries, but don't push past your boundaries. Look through the cards if you get this game and make sure everything that you <laughs> that's on the cards are things you'd like to do. And the ones that you don't take them out and put them elsewhere. Um, and we are going to let's hold on here. Let's see if I can grab this without bumping my microphone, which is, as you mentioned in my last video, kind of broken right now. All right. So. Well, also, it comes with this. A little, a really great in-universe sort of document, which I quite enjoyed. Um, we secure, we contain, and we protect. Uh, it's to EC7C from the administrator. Subject, internal memo from the administrator. Yeah, it's got proper letterhead and everything. It's great. 
We secure, we contain, and we protect. While mankind is blinded by the light, we must fight the darkness. We must resist it, contain it, and shield it from the eyes of the public so they may live in a sane and orderly existence. No one else can protect the world from this darkness, from the anomalous, and from the terrifying unknown. Throughout human history, there has always been someone to look out for the innocent, to maintain an illusion of normalcy. This cannot change. We must continue to stand up to the monsters that roam in the shadows. This is our purpose, and the reason our goals justify our means. No matter the cost, the Foundation must act as the world's protector, as its silent guardian. But we face a catastrophe. There has been a containment breach at Site-19. Anomalies have broken free of their cells, killed their keepers, and now prowl through the site. Some possess the ability to alter time and space. Many are capable of carnage. All threaten to escape into the wider world. Worst of all, without the swift recontainment of the anomalies, we face the possibility that the Foundation's existence will be revealed to the public, so we need your help. Round up the anomalies, preserve our research, and protect our anonymity. Then, and only then, should you consider your escape. You are not alone in this assignment. Our mobile task forces will not make it to the site in time, but the clock is also ticking for you. If you are unable to restore order, we are left with no option but to raise Site-19 to the ground. So hurry. We do not want a repeat of the incident at Site-13. Now go, and good luck, the Administrator. Look, it was approved by the Ethics Committee. It says it right here. So, put that over there as well. Um, there's so everything is very in universe, and I quite like it. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is the board. Let's grab the board. It's not very large board, so you don't need a huge amount of space. We we'll talk about that in a second. You don't need a whole huge amount of space for the actual play mat, which is right here. Um. I'm, at, I'm holding it upside down. Let's 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 fix it the right way, and uh, put it in the. There you go. Some of it's probably a little shiny. Probably not super readable. Um, but there are, yeah. So right here, on this side, are the safe uh, things. You roll your dice. You land on whatever. Then Euclid, then Euclid and Keter, then Keter, at the end. And there are checkpoints here, here, and here. And there's a bunch of different rules for how this is played. So many so that it would be uh, folly for me to try and go through them all with you right now. So I'm not going to. Um, I am going to walk you through some of the actual items that come with it, which I think are pretty amazing. Um, there are the <laughs> SCP Foundation branded matches, which, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but also that's kind of cool. Um, this is the rule book, obviously, which is right here. I'm not going to have to hold that up. Well, you know what? Everything is so nicely branded. Got that nice little SCP logo I like on it. Right. So, what you need to do at the beginning of the game, for sure, is you have to pick out your character. That's these cards right here. I've chosen, just to give as an example, because I'm going to have a, a version of every card to show you what, uh, what they're, what they're about and what they're like. I chose the obvious answer for me because Marshall Carter and Dark is my favorite GOI, the VIP, which is the Marshall Carter and Dark character. And there are tons of characters to pick from. Uh, but this is just the one I picked, again, to show you as an example. The VIP, Marshall Carter and Dark Limited, about the group. It is unknown whether Marshall Carter and Dark are salesmen, world leaders, or anomalous beings. They are not above bribery, blackmail, or torture, and have used all three to steal several objects from the Foundation. About the members. MC&D is a London club for the super rich, with significant political and financial influence. It is notorious for trafficking rare anomalies and providing unusual experiences for its VIP guests. As such, the VIPs will go to any lengths to retain their membership and show loyalty to the club. So you would be a member of Marshall Carter and Dark, who you come up with what's going on, I suppose. You could be there for a reason. Uh, positive trait. Own one Thaumiel at all times. If you use it or lose it, draw a new one. So um, that's actually pretty useful for showing what Thaumiels are. So Thaumiels are normally things that you have to purchase um, using... Gosh, this is a very complex game. But it is. it does seem like it could be... I mean, most board games these days are 
fairly complex. It's not that complex now that I think about it. It's just as complex as a normal modern board game is. So this is a Thaumiel card right here. These are very special. You have to usually spend resources that you acquire throughout the game to get them. Uh, this one is SCP-028, Knowledge. Individuals, and this is again, each one of these has like a little blurb at the top, tells you a little bit of in-character information. Individuals entering SCP-028 gain instant exhaustive knowledge of a random subject. Examples include every phone book entry for New York City in 1998, a design for a cold fusion reactor, plans for a combustible engine that runs on blood, and methods of care for a mole rat colony. I actually hadn't remembered this until I read that, but that's the one where I feel like it was like a factory you go into, and when you come out, it's some sort of an industrial building. But you go in, you come out, and you know things. You know a thing. And, a, and the story is that there's a guy that goes in and comes out and learns how to conquer the universe. Uh, but the in-game effects are choose a class that would be Euclid, Keter, or Safe, and inform the rest of the team. At any time, you can use this card to complete the task uh, without actually having to do what's on the card. And then you discard it. Uh, as a Marshall Carter and Dark VIP, you always have at least one of those kinds of cards in your hand. They're basically helpful cards that do things for you. Negative trait. You may only acquire Thaumiels through your positive trait. If you acquire a Thaumiel through any other means, choose the Thaumiel you want to keep and discard the other. So you can have more than one Thaumiel normally in the game, uh, but you again have to spend resources to get them. Uh, <clears throat> the way this works is you can't spend those resources to get them, but you always have at least one. And then special ability spend or forfeit 12 of these resource tokens. I'm, I'm not, what are they called? Oh, let's look on the, let's look in the rule book real quick. It's on page 15. At least I remember that much. Authorization keys is what they're called. All right. So spend 12 authorization keys. You get to own one extra Thaumiel at all times. You would own two of the helpful cards at all times. And that's what this character does. That's everything. Little things that make you play a little differently than everybody else. Now, on top of all of that, the goal of the game is outlined by these, the SCP-001s. This one is the Spiral Path. I chose it again as an example one. There are other um, SCP-001s in the box. As you approach the perimeter of the site, you take a winding path uphill, but after several minutes climbing, you find yourself back where you started. Another survivor is waiting for you. He explains that the infinite path will sorry, only lead to freedom if the team leaves as one. So what this means, yeah, what this essentially does is set your victory conditions. Uh, and for this one, it is, yeah, to complete SCP-001, the given number of personal items must be located at the end. That's on the game board right here. Yeah, at the end. And by the way, personal items are, you literally have, you instead of having like a random token that you use to represent you, you pick a thing that fits on this board and you bring it with you and that is your personal item that represents you. Um, so essentially it's saying that you need to be beyond a certain point. Um, yeah. Whenever any team member that is located on or between checkpoint three and the end moves forward, another team member in the same sector must move the same number of squares backwards. Um, and no team member may return beyond checkpoint three. So bench essentially, so the end is right here. That's accomplishing what you need to do. Um, this is very a very simple end task. You need to get everybody here. Not even everybody. You need to get two or three. It depends on if you're playing with three to five people. For three people, it's, it's essentially... Everybody but one person needs to be here, regardless of how many people you're playing with. And anytime someone is between here and here, no, oh, I'm not putting it here, here, this is where you need to be. And anytime somebody is between here and here on the map, which is up this way and around this way, anytime somebody moves forward, somebody else has to move backwards, which makes it very difficult to actually get here. Once you get here, you're good. Now. Here we go. Additional rules. If any team member is located at the end of the start of his turn, he skips his movement roll, which is, by the way, the dice are over there for that, Whenever he, he and draws a Keter card. 
Whenever he completes the task, the rest of the team moves one square forward, and no team member has to move backwards. If the O5 council member is in the game, any team member uh, moving backwards moves half the number of squares of the team member moving forward, rounding down any fractions. That's also, you can have a player, um, again, when we talk about this one, it's like, this is the VIP. You can have other characters, and I suppose this is, one of them is the O5 council member can be a member as well. So... Um, also, there are other cards, and we're going to go through the safe Euclid and Keter cards now, because we referenced them a lot, and I want to make sure I uh, get them out of the way. Um, and there's a pretty good gamut of things that you need to do physically. Yeah. So some of the stuff is pretty simple, and some of the stuff is um, quite involved. Uh, you need to be prepared for uh, physical activity with this game. So... Uh, Wow, I picked two with an eyeball on the image. Anyway, <laughs> not this one, though. This is the safe card right here. Uh, the Children's Perimeter, SCP-1451. You enter a room full of childlike statues. They are slowly moving around its perimeter. Something tells you not to break the circle, so you decide to join it. It's the only way to get to the other side. Um, and then you roll your dice. The entire team holds hands and forms a circle facing outward. The team then spins rapidly in a counterclockwise direction for the given number of revolutions. That means you literally have to physically hold hands, stand up, form a circle, and then move in that circle counterclockwise uh, for either 10, 20, or 30 revolutions, depending on what you roll. That's between uh, three and under is 10, and oh, what's that? Sorry. 7 to, f it looks like 4 to 7 is 20, and then uh, 8 and above is, uh, yeah, is 30 revolutions. So this is a physical activity that you actually have to accomplish as a group. Unless, say, you had knowledge and you could just complete it that way. Again, interactions of cards. Um, a Euclid card is something that's going to be more difficult. See, as, as you can imagine, that's, I mean, it's not simple, but it is accomplishable there's not really a lot of skill required for it or necessarily endurance required for it but euclids are harder things um this one is yeah euclids are harder things maybe uh, you got to remember to do a thing if you don't remember to do the thing bad things can happen um whenever any this is euclid eyeball at the end of the corridor you see a colossal eyeball on a stock it watches as you approach then explodes splattering you in jelly panicked you try wiping it off your skin but it's already forming into new eyeballs and you don't like what they're seeing that's scp 718 and uh yeah what we have here is uh whenever a team member draws a card scream with horror at the scp it contains this task remains in effect for the given number of newly drawn cards so this is something that you individually have to do every time uh, somebody draws a new card with an SCP on it. You have to scream about, uh, scream in horror what that card is. And this game also has a lot of this stuff where you're playing in character. So you need to be, as your character, horrified by this thing. Uh, and it says for the given number of uh, newly drawn cards. It could be 6, 9, or 12, depending on what you roll. And finally, let's grab a Keter. Even though the SCP featured is actually a Euclid, um, this makes sense that this is a, a Keter task. SCP-173. Don't blink. Inscription on the wall of SCP-173 cell. For the given amount of time, for the given amount of time, stare at SCP-0173 without blinking. You need to do that for 55 seconds, a minute and five seconds, or a minute and 15 seconds. And let me tell you, this is not an easy task to complete. This will require a little bit of probably multiple tries and uh, a little bit of work and a little bit of endurance on your side. Uh, finally, there are uh, what are called, well, let's see here, administrator cards. Uh, and I believe this is a card that can be drawn by the player who decides to play uh, also as the administrator. Uh, I think this makes things a little easier, basically. Uh, anytime, use amnestics to avoid working on another member's task. So a lot of these tasks do require people to work together. For example, the uh, hold it, hold your hands and spin around in a circle, even though it's a safe one, so it's pretty easy. You could use this to just not do that. Uh, 
you personally not having to be involved. Everybody else still has to get in their circle and do their little circular thing, but you don't have to get up and do it. Yeah. And if it requires just the attention of you and the card holder for some reason, then you don't even have to do it at all. Um, and yeah, that looks like, yeah, that's everything as an, an example of everything that's in the, in the box here. Uh, let's pull out the dice. There we go. The last CP themed dice, which I think is pretty amazing on and of itself. Um, yeah. And then there are these little tokens, little little tokens. That you use, I believe, to represent certain resources in the game as well. Um, they're mul there's multiple colors of them. There's black, they're, and they're all SCP. Essentially, just tiny little SCP. Um, yeah, SCP logos. It's pretty amazing. All right. So I wanted to show off this and give my own personal review of it. And first of all, I think it's a very well thought out game. Very well designed from uh, without playing it. I can't know for sure, but looking at the rule book, looking at how the play, how the player and the cards and the characters and everything interacts. It looks like it was very well designed. It looks like it could be a lot of fun to play as a group of friends that, you know, pretty well, I would suggest. <laughs> because, again, some of those tasks are a little bit um, require a little bit of trust. Let's put it that way. Um, but, yeah, tons of fun. And I mean, these guys put so much. Look, look at this stuff here. Let's grab the Broken God one. Look how much care they put into their stuff. These, by the way, again, I want to be clear. These are an extra thing. They cost additional money. The actual board game costs uh, a lot, actually. It's $109 for the full board game. Uh, you're getting a lot of stuff here, but it is important to know that that is the cost. If you use the uh, Dr. Sumerian coupon code, uh, you get 20% off of your whole purchase, not just for the board game, but for any purchases that you make on their website. I believe it's good until the end of July. So if you're watching this afterwards, still try and put the coupon code in. I'll see if I can't get it extended, but probably won't be. Or I don't know that, but it, I, I'm let's expect that it's not. But try it anyway, because uh, it'll at least let them know that I was I, I'm the one that sent you. And here it is beautiful stuff everything here is beautiful love it tons and tons of stuff here too let, let me grab the stack of cards give you an example this is the st this is the stack of safe cards it's not just a few it's a lot it's a lot for three let's just read through some real quick and give you an example of how different they can be uh, the calculus trap. For three rounds, whenever you're required to say a number, intentionally give a different number. Uh, Mikey's chore. For the given number of rounds, you alone may handle the team's cards. This applies to drawing and discarding the cards and holding them up to be read. It does not apply to any task necessary, uh, any card handling necessary for working on tasks. At the start of your next four turns, wrap an item of clothing around your right palm. Clothing that comes in pairs counts as one item. Each new item of clothing must be larger than the one you, the one before. You may not remove any clothing. You may forfeit four, what were they called again? AKs? I don't remember what they are. It's not my head. Authorization keys. At any time, and consider SCP-1750 complete. However, you do not earn the um, access keys. And by the way, every time you earn, oh, that's something I should point out. When you do a task, this number right here up in the upper upper right hand side of the card you earn authorization keys from uh doing them <laughs> insert a finger up each nostril for the given number of rounds and by the way this is a good is this the right one yeah well it's not the only one that i saw about this but this is the second card i've saw that involved taking off articles of clothing which is why i suggest you look through your cards and make sure that yeah you know you don't want to be necessarily playing with your family and have uh, there's another one in here it's like uh, uh remove your underwear i think it is and then put them on over your clothing but you have to stay in the room with everybody else when you do it again probably a card you should consider maybe taking out if you're playing with family uh, <laughs> just just throwing that out there unless you're a really odd family <laughs> Some of them are great. The spider proletariat expound communist rhetoric for the given number of rounds. Uh, 
<laughs> Highlight the bourgeois behavior of your other team members. Uh, these are so great. I love it. All right. That's it. I just wanted to go over a little bit of that so you can kind of get an idea of how much variety there is. There's tons and tons of stuff in here. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that. Um, you can head on over to Patreon, pledge at any level, like everybody here on the screen already has. Got to put this up on every video. This is part of the Patreon backers. But more importantly for this video, um, <laughs> go over to the escapefromsite19.com website and buy yourself one of these. It's amazing. All the stuff and it's great. Yeah, yeah. And use the Dr. Sumerian coupon code. Good for 20% off your whole purchase all the way up to the end of this month. This month being July 2021. And thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And I'll see you all again on Thursday. <laughs>